behind him maybe, but it would need a huge performance. Eris Deris has moved up there overall, I believe. Yes, Eris Deris has moved up three slots thanks to that very good javelin, which saw him as the second best javelin thrower behind Nicholas Cowell. So now the first final to be decided on the track this evening. It's the women's 400 meters hurdles just coming up very shortly. That'll come up at five o'clock local time. But we've got a few more victory ceremonies still to come. Women's pole vaulters are warming up in the background. Their yeah, women's long jumpers are soon to get going as well. Right on cue, in fact, this. Yes, the women's long jump. Championship record 7.05. That's a very good championship record indeed, held by Daria Klashina from 2011. Nobody has a personal best over seven meters this year. But Hilary Kapacha did improve to 6.81 in qualifying. That was a massive improvement of over of around 20 centimeters for the French woman, which saw Yanis David, the defending champion, crash out. She couldn't muster a jump over six meters. Only two women in rather a strange qualifying competition actually went over the automatic qualifying distance of 640, the other one being Merle Homier of Germany. So I think this medal's up for grabs. I mean, Capaccia, that was really a jump from nowhere This in the qualifying competition. Everybody otherwise on careers and distances pretty evenly matched. Only needed 6.06 to get through to the final. It was just one of those days when nothing really sparked into life, with the exception of Capaccia. As we look at Petra Beata Farkas, the first woman to jump in this final. So a good start for Farkas. Gets the white flag. Straightforward hang technique. Nothing too sophisticated, but it is effective. She gets 6.35. Nice jump for Farkas. She was fourth in the European under 20s two years ago in Grosseto. Competition this woman, Dadasevich of Serbia won. Milishka Dadasevich gets a red flag, fouls. Dadasevich two years ago jumped. 6.46 to win the European under-20 crown. Something like that on this occasion. Might well see her onto the podium. Kaiser Karlen. As best as 6.45. The red flag for Karlen. Goes back to the sidelines, gets a little bit of coaching input. Carlin, third in that competition in Grosseto. So we've got quite a number of the top finishers from the European Under-20 Championships two years ago. Once again, battling for the medals here. Chiara 
Proverbio. Quick into the board, hang technique again, but gets another red flag. So after Farkas's successful first jump, the very first jump of the competition, had just been reeling off fouls. So the jumper from the Basque Country, Erati Michelena. Not one of the stronger jumpers in this competition, but has improved to 6.35 this year, the Spaniard. Michelena at US University. Oh, nice jump there from Michelena. Jumped her best on home soil up in San Sebastian in the Basque Country just a short while ago, just a few weeks ago. Won the Spanish under 23 championships in Tarragona. So Alice Hopkins now, 6.51 for the Briton. Her personal best coming at the England Under-23 Championships in Bedford three weeks ago. Yes, yeah, so the second year in a row that she won the age group title in Bedford with a lifetime best. Spot on the board. Michelena started with 6.25. around that same distance, I think, for Hopkins. Possibly a bit less. Talented uh, heptathlete. Great presence, Holly Mills has also jumped 6.51 this year, and she actually goes in the heptathlon at the under-20s in uh, Boros, whereas uh, Hopkins focusing individually on her best event, the long jump. Yes, and 6.12 to get Hopkins started, a windy 6.12. Now, Taika Polati, the Finn. Number three on the European under-23 rankings. Faced a real battle to qualify. There was a slight mark in the plasticine. There was a bit of slight uh, remonstrations with the officials to check it, always agonizing. And that one is way over, unfortunately. But she had something like six meters and three in uh, what you described as a poor <laughs> qualifying competition, which I think was fair. Uh, 664 is her best, and she managed to get something out with the last effort in long jump qualifying. Yeah, she never liked to be critical on those sort of situations, but I genuinely don't know why the jumping was so poor, because Capacha, of course, jumped 681. And to have 606 just be sufficient to get through. But it's already looking as though this is going to be a much better competition as we look at Jessica Barrera, Portuguese jumper. 644 Barrera's mark. She gets the white flag. Still had some margin on the board. Competed at the European Games where she was throwing the javelin, so she's a talented heptathlete herself. Another US based athlete. Now look at Merle Homier. Well, legal best of 645, but she did go out to 652. Wind assisted in qualifying to secure her place in the final. And that's a good jump. Yes, gets the white flag as well. Confirmation that it's a good jump. Well, confirmation that it's a legal jump.
640, so just five centimeters short of a personal best, although it's a 2.6 meters per wind. So it won't be a legal mark. You don't take wind assistance into consideration in the competition itself. Now, Sarah Lukic. Well, Lukic. The weakest jumper in this final. Might consider herself a little bit lucky. She did get through with just 6.06, but it means there's two Serbian jumpers following the footsteps of the great Ivana Spanovic. So four for Sarah Lukic. Hilary Capacha now. Well, she was the sensation of qualifying. Adding 20 centimeters onto her personal best. The massive jump of 681. What can she do here? Oh, good jump again from Capacha. Fast on the run up. Pitch kick. Slightly verges out to the right hand side of the run up. There's not much to spare on the board there. Well, I think it was a good jump. 6.73. Well, Capacha has really brought her best form to this competition. I mean, that's further than she'd ever jumped before she arrived in Yevla as well. Now, Hannah Mordens, the bronze medalist in the heptathlon, and a very good long jumper in her own right. Made the final of this competition two years ago as well. Boards are spare on the board. Gets the white flag. Just a bit over six meters. Plenty more to come from Mordens. So that completes the first round of the women's long jump with Hilary Kabacha leading the way by no less than 33 centimetres with that first round effort of 6.73. Mil Homier, 6.40 in second place at the moment. To the final of the women's 400 metre hurdles, we have all three medalists from Grosseto two years ago at the European under-20s, including the reigning European under-20 champion, Yasmin Giga of Switzerland. Natalia Vostil on her inside of Poland, who won the 400 meter flat, the fantastic last ditch finish from Natalia Kasparek. Agata Zupin, Slovenian national record holder, silver medalist from Grosseto. That was her PB race, 55 9 at best. Pauline Kukait, part of the Belgian World Relay squad in Yokohama in Japan earlier this year. Both semi-finals won by Italians. One of them was Sartori. That new lifetime best set in this competition. Olivieri, her teammate alongside the Italian under-23 champion. And Bondrova, the silver medalist from the 400 meter flat, who was beaten by the pole Kasparek, as I mentioned, in the final stage of that race, one of the highlights of yesterday's great competition. And Vivi Lehikoinen, the European under-20 bronze medalist, the Finnish champion who actually won European youth gold in 2016 in Tbilisi, Georgia. What a lineup that is. As I say, both semi-finals were won by Italians. One of them, Olivieri, and there's the back of Sartori as she settles into her blocks. So a tough one to call 
Zupin, not quite at her best this year, but still an outstanding athlete in lane six. So Lehekoinen, Vondrava, Olivieri, Sartori, Kukait, Zupin, Vostil, and Giga. The women's 400 meter hurdles final. So who will be on the podium at the European under 23s here in Sweden? Fantastic start by Olivieri, already made up some ground on her teammate. On her outside, looks like Kukait of Belgium going well also. So Zupin and the bright green of Slovenia. Those two Italians in the centre though, in the blue. Kukait, lifetime best, 57-11. The tall figure of Zupin. Now coming into the home straight, looking pretty strong, but bit of work to do. Olivieri, the one who rises first. Vondrava chasing her down. Can she get another silver medal? Kukai now finding a bit more form down the home straight, gritting her teeth, but so is Olivieri. Oh my goodness me, the Italian falling at the last. Extraordinary stuff, it was so close on the line. They were both fighting at the end of that race. An extraordinary finish. It's been given to Kukai, the Belgian with a new lifetime best of 56.17. Well, she made a fantastic start then composed herself in the middle phase of the race when Olivieri looked to be running away with it. Let's have a look at her home straight here, Phil. Yes, Olivieri, the only woman under 56 seconds this year. She's looking to her right and she's got a massive margin here and then suddenly starts to tire up and it all starts to go horribly wrong and ends up diving through the line as Kukait of Belgium holds her form, stays upright, continues her momentum and takes the gold medal. Almost ignored in that drama, Yasmin Geiger comes through for the bronze for Switzerland. What an extraordinary finish to that final. And uh, I tell you what, you saw that Olivieri just uh, stuttering with her run up, just losing her form into that last barrier thought she got away with it and that she was going to hold her technique to the line but not so unfortunate for the Italian who won her semi-final but it's gold for Belgium here 56-17 as we see it come up on the screen Olivieri then the silver medalist and as you said Bill bronze to Switzerland and yeah. Zupin only fifth place but yes you just said, said, saw there the two Italians Sartori consoling her colleague, her distraught colleague, as they left the track. So, Petra Beata Farkas, first woman to jump in the second round, had a very good 6.35 to get things underway. Oh, that's a nice jump. That's around the 6.50 mark. Farkas has a personal best of 6.52. That could challenge that Mark, indeed it does. Perfect win condition, 65, 6.55. Just getting a little bit too excited there. With 1.9 meters per second on her back. So Farkas moves up into the silver medal position. But still a very long way to go. We're just at the start of the second round. That long jump competition still being led by Hilary Kapacha with that massive 6.73. This is Taika Colati. Foul in the first round for the Finn. We're midway through the second round, but we are live now. Just to let you know, there was nobody else who improved in the top half of the long jump. That's a long jump from Kalati. After some ragged form in the... Oh, she's going over to examine the plaster scene. Just like she did in qualifying. Yeah. Okay. 
is the finest of indentations, but it is clear once you have a close up on the camera and she does get a red flag. What a pity because that would have been around 660, I think. Oh, yes. But nevertheless, once the plasticine was taken out and just shown to her, I don't think she had any arguments. But it was just the finest of margins. So two fouls for Galati. Jessica Barrera. Well, Barrera had a modest 6.03 to kick things off with. Has a personal best of 6.44. 22-year-old Portuguese jumper. He's very, very competent at many other disciplines as well. Quite a talented heptathlete, but focusing on this single event here. No problems about the plasticine being marked there. She was quite a way behind the, the plasticine and gets a white flag. It's not much of an improvement, if anything at all. Just getting a little bit overcast and chilly here. 6.10 for Barrera. At her best, she's fabulous to watch. Great speed on the runway and uh, fantastically springy in the jump as well. So, Mel Homier, 6.40. Had a windy 6.52 in qualifying. One of only two women over the qualifying distance. She's in third position at the moment now. Form on the runner, good hang technique, but gets a foul. Just a two or three centimeters into the plasticine. So, Homie's second jump ends with the red flag being shown. Sarah Lukic. Hitch, 6.04 in the first round. Well, not going to challenge the top three. She does get a white flag. So, uh, slightly surprising finalist, but... Uh, She's enjoying her experience. She's eligible to come back and compete in two years' time at the next edition of these championships in Bergen, in Norway. 5.95 for Lukic. As we look at the long jump leader, Hilary Kapacha. Well, 6.73 with just a modicum of wind behind her. Oh, terrific acceleration into the board. Great height as well. White flag. My inclination is to say it's not quite as far as that 673, but still good distance. Six sixty-five, so still better than anybody else has jumped. Next best, the Hungarian you saw just a moment ago, Petra Biata Farkas. Six fifty-five. Hannah Mordens brings to a close the second round. Six oh six in the first round. Well, the Belgian. Just saw her compatriot take gold in the 400 meters hurdles just a short while ago. If that doesn't motivate you, what will? Long way back on the board. Not such good jumping from Mordens. 
did jump 6.22 in the heptathlon, which eventually helped her to the bronze medal. Yeah, and it was a great 800 metres as well. I think it was 2.08 the time to finish that heptathlon. So improving through this competition. Farkas, 6.55, second to Capacha. It's wonderful to see the French woman's celebration after that incredible jump in qualifying. Here is Farkas. Gets the white flag. Well, Hungary got a uh, silver medal in the hammer. They perhaps expected gold, no improvement for Farkas. So, Garda Savic, number one Serbian in this field, but there's mostly two fouls so far. Well, I think she played it safe there. Gets the white flag, but a long way behind the board. European under 20 champion. Still. The reigning under-20 champion as we go to Boras next week on the other side of Sweden, just north of Gothenburg for this year's European under-20 championships. 6.21, so that puts her up into fifth place. Still a few jumpers to come, but she's got a good chance of getting through to three further jumps. Kasia Karlen, the Swede, two fouls for Karlen. Now she needs to jump further than 6.09 to get into the top eight and have a chance of progressing. Long, long, long way behind the board. She's disgusted with herself. Does get the white flag, it will be measured. Carlen, I'm sure there's plenty of people here to watch her, and I don't think she feels she's done herself justice. Well, she gets 6.21 nevertheless. Just looking across to the infield scoreboard. So it does move her up into fifth place. Just take a break from the long jump competition for a moment and move to the track for the men's 400 meters hurdles final. Well, we saw drama at the end of the women's event just 15 minutes ago. I'm just wondering what we're going to see here. Well, this is the 19 year old Alex Porras. Porras, very talented under 18 runner and uh, didn't quite make his mark in the junior ranks, but now coming back to the very highest level. Sinkukas of Latvia. European under-20 champion Wilfried Hapio of France. Had a great semi-final run. Emil Nana Kwame Agyakum. Proved his personal best by over half a second to get here. European leader in the under-23 ranks has run 49-79 this year, Nick Schmidt. Constantine Priest. Well, he's run two very good heats and semis. Getting through as an on automatic qualifier. Alex Nibs, the Briton. And likewise, on his outside, the non automatic qualifier from the semis. Ramsey Angela from the Netherlands. So I think we're really looking at lanes three, four, five, and six. They're the four men 
who have all gone under 49 seconds at various points. Well, three of those four. Agicom, though, had a terrific semi-final, just, just a bit shy of 49 seconds. But Pre Schmidt and Happio have all gone under the 50-second benchmark. As they settle into their blocks from the inside, Angela Netherlands, Nibs Great Britain, Priest Germany, Schmidt Netherlands, Agicom Germany, Happio France, Senkukovs Latvia and Porus of Spain. <laughs> Further away, and it looks like Happio starting very quickly indeed, almost up on the shoulder of Sinkukis after just a few barriers. Agikam on his inside running well at this point. And Schmidt of the Netherlands, so it's the big three on the outside, and then a bit of a gap back to Priest. But it's Happio and Schmidt now. Three barriers to go coming into the home straight. Papio now has extended his lead. He's had a really good bend. Coming up to the last barrier, and it's Happio looking to add the under-23 continental title to the one he's got from Grosseto as an under-20 athlete two years ago. Well, Wilfred Happio smashes his personal best. Takes almost a second off his personal best with that gold medal run. Wilfred Happio takes the gold. Nick Schmidt behind him, personal best. Emil Nanakwame, another personal best for the German, going under 50 seconds for the first time. Personal best for the German. That's the one, two, three. And in fourth, Priest, another German, also under 50 seconds in that race. But from 150 metres out, from three barriers out, Wilfred Happio just poured it on. And while everybody else was tiring, Wilfred Happio had the luxury of looking around to check where everybody was and comes through, smashing his personal best and takes the gold medal here in Yevla. European under-23 leading time of the year. Nobody's run faster than him in the under-23 ranks. Confirmed 49.03 for Happio. Schmidt reduces his personal best to 49.49. Agiacum, 49.69. Priest also under 40, 50 seconds with 49.92. And Sinkukovs of Latvia back in fifth, but gets a national under 23 record in 50.04. As we're now looking at the third jump of. Finland's Kolati, two fouls. Oh, and a third foul for Kolati. The Finn just crashes out. That's the third time she's just been a centimetre or so into the Plasticine. Well, Kolati, third best on the European under-23 list, but no mark in the final for the Finn. Well, also in the field, we've got the women's pole vault just got underway, and we've got the women's javelin as well. And very shortly, the women's 1500 meters, once they've cleared the hurdles, will get going. Well, this is the medal presentation for the women's 20 kilometer walk that we saw a little bit earlier this afternoon. So, Aisha Tekdal of Turkey takes the gold medal. And her gold medal presented by European Athletics Council member Fatih Sintamir.